Have you ever gone out hunting and come across a fence with a sign like this? I don't know about you, but I just don't understand what a fence with no access has to do with conservation. Turns out this fence was probably built to keep sheep and goats out to protect rare native plant species. And while this fence was probably built four years or more ago, goats still inhabit this fenced area by the hundreds. Beats me why you'd fence in goats for years with your protected plants. You'd figure this is probably creating an even worse situation. But never mind that, having a, a sign that says conservation area on it probably makes it look a whole lot better. Now if you didn't get the sarcasm, of course fencing in goats with your plants is probably a thoughtless idea. Maybe someone out there can let us know what is really going on here. But my main point is, is conservation is not fences and eradication of animals. The word conservation actually has a long history and wasn't created overnight. Back in the day in the 1900s, there were huge debates as Americans spread out west over land management and the ideals of conservation versus preservation. You can take a look at the description below for a link to a video that explains the difference between conservation and preservation. I would encourage all that who enjoy the outdoors to please take a look at the video. The events between Gifford Pinchot and John Muir over the Hetch Hetchy Valley is of great historical importance. I think we each need to know what we believe in and our history before we can start to think about the issues. Basically, conservation is a wise use of natural resources in a sustainable way and preservation is the protection of natural resources in its original state, probably never to be used. Now I can share sympathy for both ideas and see the need for each. However, calling a preservation effort a conservation effort is wrong and we should make a clear difference between the two. Ethical hunters, fishermen and gatherers believe in a conservation approach where we can wisely use the natural resources, yet make sure it is done in a sustainable way by limiting take, putting back where we have taken, and funding management of resource objectives. In a fence where public access will not be allowed and all animals are to be eradicated, and taxpayers will be forced to foot the bill for all of this, and don't forget to let me mention the eternal weed poisoning and outplanting that usually comes with the fence, it would be highly correct to be calling this a conservation area. For what wise use are we conserving here? There will be no resource use here. It might be more fitting to call this a preservation area instead. Now you might be thinking, what difference does it make? It's just words, Ryan. Who cares what we call it? Main thing, we protect all the endangered species here. For hunters, fishermen, and gatherers, it does matter. Because we believe in conservation, we must not accept to let people disguise these kinds of preservation efforts as conservation. We don't believe in fencing off large swaths of land only to sit there and cut off all public use of land taxpayers are paying for. And the management practices in fences like this are questionable, with continual invasive weeds, limited success on outplanting, and limited and sporadic funding that lets critical enclosures go unmanaged with no sight of a self-sustainable ecosystem that the preservationist so desperately seeks. I have personally visited enclosures with critically endangered plants that are being overrun by invasive weeds, simply because there is probably no money to do the work or the work is simply not getting done. Yet somehow they built the fence. Simply building fences with no thought of the overall management and impact of it is nearsighted and is not conservation. So the bottom line is this, humans have to use resources, yet we are capable to use them in intelligent and sustainable ways. Hunting and fishing revenues continually fund efforts to protect all kinds of species and natural habitats throughout the country. And here in Hawaii, conservation through hunting and fishing too can be used to fund efforts for both non-native game and native species. We just need a department that is willing to step up to their duty to manage our resources for everyone. But you know, it is pretty hard to use the conservation model to raise funding when we kill off all of our hunting and fishing opportunities, do the preservation approach, and poor resource management. So there you have it. Know the difference between conservation and preservation and how it affects us here in Hawaii. Hunting and fishing is conservation, and don't let the preservationists tell us otherwise. Thanks for watching, guys, and hope your holidays are going well. Aloha.